Well, so you've been playing senior football for 15, maybe 16 years. How has the game and, and the training methods changed in that, during that period? Well, it's obviously become more professional, more demanding. The, uh, the pace of the game has changed. Uh, when I first started playing in 1968, you, you had your position to play and that was it. If you were full forward, well then you were full forward. If you were centre wing, you had to stay uh, on the wing. Now the uh, players become uh, that much faster and a player has to be flexible to play almost any position on the ground uh, at a given time uh, because uh, of the, the nature of the game and the pace of the game. But uh, in, in the early days it was sort of a, a centre-half back against a centre-half forward or a half-forward flank against a half-back flank. Now uh, when you go for the ball you could have three opponents. And what about training? Training, uh, we used to come down, uh, Bruce Light and I used to drive down from Wakery Tuesday and then train up there Thursday night uh, and that was it. Now we train Sunday, we train Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, we play Saturday of course and then it's back to Sunday uh, and that doesn't uh, include the nights where you have to watch videos and dissect your game and your opponent's game and the team's game. Of all the things that you have achieved in football, is there any one that gives you the greatest satisfaction? Yes, 1977 Premiership, without doubt. It's a team game and uh, to, uh, to win that Premiership after so many lean years, uh, about 12 years of of playing league football and to get so close playing about four or five grand finals and never even get close to winning a premiership the the feeling after that when that final siren rang in 77 was uh, a real highlight and the highlight of uh, of my career Shadow wing, Thorns couldn't reflect the grab Holt took Ebert out of it, allowed Thorns back in McInerney, Ebert through, Spring got him by in trouble Move it forward. Just to leave it. To the right half forward flank. Across again to Warren. Barkwa. James battering up again. Ebert. Determination on his face. Kicks the ball to a half forward line off the ground. Just on nine minutes of the last term played. Carey's tap away. Ebert through. He can bounce his way to attack. Carries it towards centre half forward. Then goes for the lead of Evans. Russell Ebert, who bows and declares that a premiership is greater than his three McGarry medals. A 19 point margin to the Magpies and David Johnston successfully marks. A quick play on, they have to move it. Russell Ebert, he can bounce his way into attack. Into the forward pocket he goes, Jeff Flethen is there. The experience of Flethen, Flethen running into the open space, creating the lead for his skipper to kick to worked. Stopping in there, Leo Lethen comes out, dribbles it along the line, but once more valuable seconds sticking by. Ball out of play, full forward pocket. Seven minutes of time on. Port Adelaide, there it is. Port Adelaide, the Premiers in 1977. Centenary year. And triumph for John Cale. Taking us a bloody long time, but by Jesus, worth it. What about nerves before a match? Do you suffer from nerves before a very big game? I, su I, I suppose uh, if you're not suffering from nerves, well, then you're not properly prepared. And anyone who goes into any event. Uh, 100% relaxed and thinking that it's all done, that they will never ever succeed. So it's a different sort of nervousness. It's uh, it's hard to explain, but it's just a an eagerness and a 
keenness and a, probably a tuning to, a, to the nth degree to get ready for that particular event, whether it be a team game or a, an individual uh, performance. But uh, I suppose you'd call it uh, nerves, but I think it's just uh, the, um, the feeling of expectation and preparing yourself properly for the event. I believe that uh, players have their day and uh, every opponent is hard uh, on their particular day. Uh, Barry Robin is undoubtedly the best uh, player that I've seen uh, going all through the names of whoever you'd like to, uh, to uh, throw up because he's undoubtedly the, the, the most brilliant I've seen. Uh, and I suppose probably the hardest opponent because of that. Uh, but then again, when you're playing a particular player like that, you lift yourself. Uh, every player has, uh, has good days and um, he may be an underrated player, but he'll do a job uh, and so he's got to be a hard opponent. But it's not, it's not always the brilliant uh, big name player that is the hardest opponent. How do you feel about coaching the great side? Port Adelaide well, it, certainly, it certainly is, a, a, is an honour to, uh, to coach Port Adelaide. It's an honour to coach any, any club, I believe, uh, because uh, you've been given the opportunity and the people who elect you consider that uh, you uh, can do the job. And particularly with Port Adelaide, with such a uh, tradition over the, the years, and the small number of personnel that really hold positions at Port Adelaide, uh, that uh, even brings it home more to me, the importance of the job. Uh, and I've sort of gone into it with, with open eyes uh, because I've played with the lads for a number of years. I've been associated with the administrators down there for a number of years and uh, really uh, it's, uh, it's not different to what I thought but uh, it's very, very demanding and people just don't realise the hours that are put in. Uh, in preparing just a, a small segment of training. The hours of preparation that go in are, are unbelievable, but uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I've enjoyed what's uh, been done up to date. Uh, the lads are keen and uh, enthusiastic about 83 because we weren't successful in 82, and I think if the people around are keen and enthusiastic enough, this makes the, the coach's uh, job a little bit easy, not a little bit easier, not that it's easy, but with 100% support, uh, it makes the job uh, very rewarding.